Hello, everybody. Jason Creel here, Lung Care Life, and appreciate you guys joining the live stream. We've been doing these regular on Monday nights. I'll put my phone on, turn the volume down in case somebody calls me. Uh, but thank you for joining, and whether you're watching live or on replay, and it's um, October the 11th. So you guys go ahead and uh, post your questions, and we'll try to get to as many as we can. And I look forward to having a good conversation. If you go to post a question, it's helpful if you'll let me know where you live and what kind of grass you're dealing with. Um, sometimes that's helpful. And wanted to start uh, just by talking to you about something that happened to me today. I was uh, out spraying yards. And, and one good thing that happened was I've, I've kind of finished up my fall applications today. And I may pick up one or two other yards. But for the most part, I'm, I'm done spraying the fall application. So I'm really excited about that because I got a little bit of, of a break. Um, and I'm, let's see, next week we'll be going to the GIE Plus Expo. Excited about that. If you haven't registered, you can use uh, my code is VIPLCF. So when you go to register, you put uh, in as for a promo code VIPLCF will get you 50% off. And I'm going to be uh, joining the influencer panel on Friday morning. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and, and just hanging out and bringing my kids with me this time, my wife and kids, so should have a good time. But today I was out spraying yards getting my point. Somebody called and I, I answered the phone and they're looking for a quote for their lawn, and uh, which is great. And they're in a new neighborhood that just popped up in our town and it's going to be a lot of little small yards, which I was perfect for me. And he starts talking, asking questions, and, and I, you know, I can't, he's trying to fill me out for a price, and I was like, I can't, I need to look at the yard, and it's hard to give you a price, but I said, you know, if it's, if it's two to three thousand square feet, I was familiar with the neighborhood, I said, it's probably in the neighborhood of $35 or so, and he said, he lists off one of the local franchises that had quoted him $25, and I thought, and I just, you know, I thought, $25, man, I just, you know, anyway, I, I told him, I said, listen, um, most of the time when people are price shopping, which is fine, I, I, they don't necessarily always choose me. I, uh, I try to sell them on the perks of my company and what I do differently than some other companies. Um, but 25 bucks is just not worth it, in my opinion. So anyway, I don't know if you guys get some of those really low competitor prices that people throw out. But to me, what, what I'm trying to do in that situation is screen the caller and try to get some information. And when he said, Hey, I've already gotten a couple other quotes and it, it became pretty clear that he just wanted the lowest price out there. Uh, was not necessarily looking for quality or results. And that's fine if that's what he's looking for, but there's no sense in me stopping what I'm doing, go drive over there, measure his yard, come back and tell him $35. He's, oh, well, somebody else is going to be $25. So I was really appreciative. He told me it was $25 because I was just like, I'm not doing it for $25. I'm not, I'm not even remotely interested in that. So anyway, uh, that's that was my story from today. Let's get to the comments here. Vietnam guy says, hello. I am new to lawn care. Any tips? Um, you got to give more specific questions than that, just to be honest with you. But I, I do have, I tell people on the eyes, I got 800 videos on YouTube about. Um, so you can go watch those. They're filled with tips. But if you got a specific question, be happy to entertain that. Good evening from Michael. Chris says, I'm early. Looking forward to a great show. I am too, Chris. Um, can you give some tips on recognizing fungus versus chinch bug or any other insect damage on lawn, specifically St. Augustine grass this time of year, South Carolina, not the coastal regions? Um, you know, and, and we have a little bit of St. Augustine here, but but not a lot. But I, but I was noticing today, I think it was, in a, a yard that had centipede grass. And the fungus that I saw, uh, if it's an active fungus, a lot of times it'll be – kind of an orangish color around the perimeter of the of the brown spot there uh, where chinch bug damage I, I don't think is that so a lot of times uh, and i've seen the chinch bug damage more in zoysia lawns but um sometimes like for this this year when it looked like chinch bug damage the way i've been taught if the yard we've got plenty of rain and and yet it looks like drought damage okay 
Um, but there's no, and of course, plenty of rain can also cause a fungus. But like I said, that, that orange perimeter around the fungus, um, you wouldn't have that on chinch bug damage. And then sometimes you can actually get down on your hands and knees. I think I've got a chinch bug video on, on YouTube. If you went to Wild Care Life chinch bugs, and I think I actually found one in the yard and could show you. So sometimes you can actually get out there and, and um, find them. I mean, they're, they're tiny, but um, you may be able to find one. Uh, let's see. Best time for fall application in North Florida. Um, you know, to me, a lot of that's going to be weather related. So, for instance, I, I look, I just finished up all my applications today, but it's hard to time it exactly perfect. So, what we do, we put you put a post emergent in there along with your pre emergent. So, I'm spraying Spectacle Flow, but I've got um, Simazine in there with it. I've got 2,4-D. I've got, you know, so I'm hoping that if even if I'm late, some of the weeds have germinated. Hopefully, those post emergents will, will be able to re, you know kill the weed <clears throat> or maybe the um, the spectacle flow, if it's some like POA, you know, it has a little bit of reach back ability. It can reach back and kill the weed if it, if you're a little bit late. So, but as far as the, to answer your question, as far as the timing, like for instance here, um, I, I looked at the forecast today. Today was in the 80s, tomorrow 80s, next day 80s. But on Saturday, uh, five days from now, it, it, the high is like 69 and then the lows are down in the 40s starting next week. Uh, so you get that. So you definitely want it down before that happens, okay? So I guess, you know, but but I'm already seeing cool season weeds. So I would say if I was in North Florida, I would go ahead and spray it now, okay? I'm not looking at your forecast. Uh, I think I think it's going to be cooling off sooner than later, and um, I would go ahead and do it. Wesley says, what's your mixing ratio of simazine and prodiamine mixed together? Um, simazine, I'm putting two pints per acre. Prodiamine, uh, if I, I was using the, I'm not really using prodiamine right now in the fall. When I was using the powder kind, it was, uh, I think it was 1.15 pounds per acre. So what, if you're using a different, uh, maybe the liquid version, I believe the way you do it is you take the annual max rate and uh, this is what at least I was doing, annual max rate and you use half of that in the fall. So let's just say it was 2.3 pounds for the year. Half of that's 1.15 pounds and you use that in, for your fall application. And the idea is that you'd have the other half available in the spring or early in the year. Um, so that, that's how that works. What do you do to stay busy during the slowdown of grass? Well, Josh here has his Pittsburgh Steelers um, logo. The Najee, we are fans of Najee Harris, and his I've come from Alabama. So, um, but what we, you know, here in, in Alabama, I actually spray yards year round, so it doesn't really stop. Uh, I must say, I finished my fall application today. I have a little break. I start up putting lime out in November. Um, want to have a little break around Christmas, and then January we start spraying pre emergence So, but people that mow lawns, they do end up with a break, and you know maybe mow at the end of October. Um, some of them get into landscape and they do leaf cleanup, they you know things like that. But uh, that's one big advantage of the weed control and fertilization here is it's year round. All right, Jason, can you plug centipede any time of the year in Atlanta? Uh, you probably you probably can. Uh, it, it, you may if it's not rooted well. You, it's possible that you could get some winter damage if we had a you know a cold winter there in Atlanta. So like Bermuda grass. I mean, I'd say yeah, definitely any time of year. Centipede. I mean, it's still it's still probably fine. I, I want to say that hesitant because it, you know like I said, if it's not well rooted and we get a cold winter, I can't guarantee the results. Um, so to to be safer you know i would say if you're going to do it now this year go ahead and do it as soon as possible and let it try to get established before we start getting um, you know get into cold weather or wait until you know march or april or so as the weather starts warm up just mow and blow question mark not sure i understand that but no i don't do just mow and blow i, I i'm a weed control guy i used to uh, mow a lot of yards as well all right hey bro thanks for all you do quick question sodden st augustine glyphosate weeds 
or till the ground, remove weeds that way. Uh, they're wild. What's, sorry, I'm having to interpret this question here. He's trying to sod St. Augustine, and he's wanting to know, basically, should he just kill the grass, kill, spray it with Roundup or glyphosate or or till it up? And I would probably uh, spray it. It's still, you know, wild common Bermuda is still hard to kill. I sprayed my – I did that to my yard, sprayed it twice, and I still got some common Bermuda mixed in with my hybrid Bermuda. So – uh, he says in South Texas, it, you know, you still got some warm weather in South Texas. So, yeah, I would say go ahead and do that uh, sooner than later. And um, and then you can put your St. Augustine. Now, yeah, I don't know if, where you live. Does it get below freezing or not? Um, it, it may not. So that might be why you may be okay putting your St. Augustine out now. I'm kind of – we're in the northern part of St. Augustine territory, so it's a little risky to put St. Augustine out now where I live. Lower prices means watered down herbicides. Uh, yeah, that is relating to the story I told at the beginning where I, I got a quote today from a competitor. Uh, the potential customer told me a competitor quoted him 25 bucks. Um, sometimes, yeah, they 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 may use uh, cheaper fertilizer, cheaper products, and there's cheaper ways to do things. And you always got to balance. I don't necessarily go for the most expensive way to do things. You got to balance delivering that quality product to your customer quality service quality results uh with you know still you got to make money as a business so you got to be able to price it in a way so that that's a tricky balance sometimes i don't have the most expensive program i can come up with but i'm not going to just use cheap products and get terrible results either uh, just you know it, it's a balance what do you do to winterize your customers yards and when do you do it you know we we i I, I get confused with that term. I think when people talk about winterizing their yards, they're basically putting some sort of um, nutrients in the lawn to prepare it for winter. And I, here in the South, when we deal with our warm season grasses, I don't know hardly anybody that winterizes their lawn. The grass is going dormant and we're spraying, trying to keep weeds out. And then next year when it wakes up from dormancy, we'll start putting the nutrients back into the soil to try to help it you know, turn green again during the growing season. You said you're finished with your fallout. So does that mean you're done for the rest of the year except on new customers? No, uh, Chandler, we do lime. And most companies around here do lime. And we you can do it any time of the year, but we start in November. So I'll, I'll be putting out lime in November and on into December, most likely. All right. Any tips on applying MSMA that I'm definitely putting on my 3,000 square foot golf course, not my residence? Um, yeah, you, well, you know, follow the label, obviously. Um, it, so my understanding is it works better after the grass has been mowed um, just on Bermuda grass. If you use it on zoysia, it'll turn it brown. Use it on centipede, it might just kill it or St. Augustine. So I would say go just on your Bermuda. Do it after the lawn's been mowed, and it may take multiple applications to kill uh, tough weeds like Dallas grass. So you you mow it and spray, wait 10 days, mow it, spray, wait 10 days, mow it, spray. And it definitely works better in hot weather. So, you know, 85 degrees um, or more. So, you know, I don't know where you live. I forget where you said you live. But <clears throat> if it's cooling off like it is here, it's not not a great time for that. And just should mention, it's not illegal on residential properties. Thoughts on bent grass, how to eradicate it. I've tried glyphosate for new seeding. It burned it down. already seen it come back. Putting a new stand of fescue in the western Pennsylvania. Somebody help me out there that deals with cool season grasses, helps CP out. Um, I deal with the warm season grasses, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be a lot of help on that one. But hopefully, somebody in the audience can help us out. uh jason is there anything i can mix to get same or near to tribute total you know uh, tribute total if for those of you not familiar we, we use it on bermuda and zoysia lawns and what's great about it is it it's good for grassy weeds broadleaf weeds and sedges so for me the, the about the closest combination i know of is celsius and certainty mixed together and the advantage of that in my opinion is you can also use that on not only on bermuda and zoysia but also on centipede in St. Augustine lawns, it, it also that combination will work on your sedges, work on your broadleaves, work on your grassy weeds, 
And I haven't necessarily compared the price of mixing those two to just tribute tolls. Probably not a whole lot of difference, um, but that's a combination I use a lot. Jason, I was wondering about reseeding the lawn is full of weeds with bahia grass. I reseeded a week ago in Florida. Um, yeah, I Jose asked about that. I, I know people in Florida have bahia lawns. I for me, that's just so hard to even wrap my mind around because bahia puts up the seed head so fast. So I don't know, unless you're using like a growth regulator to keep the seed head suppressed. I just can't fathom having a bahia grass lawn so i i don't know if i lived in florida i think i would be looking for saint augustine and not bahia grass um you know but anyway i i don't know i i think i would kill try to kill the weeds and and, and go with saint augustine or bermuda before i put bahia best flavor of bermuda grass seed savannah georgia um you know, check out the ones that Pennington has to offer. They, they come out with new varieties. I, I'm trying to remember. There was like a Princess 77 was one, but then I, I think they've had one or two others since they came out with those. So, the, you know, Art, what is it? Arden 15 might be another one. I'm not familiar with all the, the latest ones, but they'll, if you go on their website, I think I've looked at it before because I was seriously considering seeding my yard. Um, but I wouldn't seed your grass right now. It, it's going to need to be hot to seed your Bermuda lawns. I think you're kind of late, to be honest with you. Um, you could plug it like I've done mine, and it would take root over the winter and really take off next year, or wait until next May or so. You know, when the temperatures get hot, that would be my advantage. But you can check out some of those that uh, some of those varieties that I mentioned, and they'll probably tell you which one's the best on their website because they keep improving them. What do you recommend for yard moss? We tell people when I have customers, they, they've got moss in their yard. So typically moss grows where the grass does not like to grow. I mean, you can, I don't know. So I'm sure there's probably stuff out there that will kill it. I mean, if you just did a search, but usually it's an, it's not, it's an issue of like, is it not draining well? Is it on a North facing slope? Is it, not get you know just not getting enough sunlight so there's a reason the moss is there so you know unless you address the the source of the moss what's causing the moss then i don't know if the moss is the primary problem so anyway thumbs up for great results all right chris uh jose says scott's tall fescue mix uh, jose um Oh, I got you. He, he's wanting to reseed in, in Florida. I, I don't think your tall fescue is going to do too good in Florida. I think, like I said, I think you're going to need some Bermuda or St. Augustine down there. So I, I would uh, do a little research on that before I spent my money on that. Hey, Jason, I have some grassy weeds like fescue and carpet grass with some rye patches in my Bermuda turf now that my premier is going to go dormant. Word you say it's okay to spray it down with. And, uh, I think he's asking me what 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 should he spray those weeds with. Well, you know, when your Bermuda goes totally dormant, you can use glyphosate and kill good grassy weeds in your uh, Bermuda lawn. But um, carpet grass, you know, we use Celsius on that. Rye grass um, is you can use Revolver, you can use Katana, you can use Tribute Total. Uh, Tribute Total would work on on all that. So, you know, it is. Or you can wait to just dorm it and spray it with, with glyphosate. So however you want to do it. All right. Uh, no freezing around here. People side year round. What's the application of prodiamine per thousand square feet? I have the powdered formula. Yeah, I mix mine per acre. So again, you read the label, um, and I, I, the it depends on what time. I said in the fall, I was using one point one five pounds per acre in the. Uh, in January or so, I was using like 0.75 pounds per acre and then come back with a, a follow-up application with more. So it depends on what you're trying to accomplish with it. Um, but that's per acre. I don't know about per thousand square feet. Glyphosate and Roundup on the patches and where can I buy the fertilizer you use? Because I want to do the same apps you do for fertilization. Um, well, the tricky thing about even when you're spraying um, if you're spraying weeds on a dormant Bermuda lawn with glyphosate, 
you, you, you might want to be careful just going through their spot treating. Sometimes it might even make more sense unless it's just literally a few weeds. You could spot treat those. But if you go through there and just start spraying big spots, what it can do is delay the green up on the lawn. And what happens is it may, um, by delaying the green, it's going to look, it's going to look weird in the spring. If the rest of your yard starts greening up and this has been delayed green up because it has some stunted growth from the, from the glyphosate, then that's not going to look right. So um, you want to be careful spot treating like that. All right. Favorite brand of glyphosate been using one called RM43 from Tractor Supply. Expensive but seeing good lasting results. I'm trying to remember what, uh, oh, one asked to I mean, where I buy my fertilizer. I, you know, you gotta be licensed usually, but I, I buy my stuff from Harold. So you go to Harold's uh, website and you uh, get in touch with your rep there, fill out an application online. They can probably connect you that way. Uh, favorite brand of glyphosate. I forget, you know, yeah, both that, um, I don't really remember. I, I don't have a, I mean, most of it's going to work. I'm not saying I've heard people say, oh, this one's better than this one. But I mean, if it's, if it's like a 41% glyphosate product, it's probably going to do pretty well at killing weed. So I don't, or 43%, whatever it is. Um, so I, I wouldn't be too, I'm not too brand specific on that. Uh, so do you find out when you don't split out specs going to come back with prodiamine in January, your pull breakthrough is minimal? Yes, uh, minimal for sure. Um, I've heard, you know, some people like doing the split apps in the, with their spectacle in the fall. I just did one app, six and a half ounces, and um, there would be a little bit of POA occasionally, but uh, that's probably going to vary year to year, to be honest with you. If we have a, a rainy year, maybe you have more polar breakthrough. So, but no, I, I've been real happy with it. All right. Unable to find triple 10 or 16, four, eight fertilizer with Scott spreader settings. Can you find this stuff at Home Depot or local feed store with no spreader settings suggestions? Um, yeah, I mean, not everything's going to have a spreader setting on there. It's more, but you, what you can do is figure out how much nitrogen you're, you're trying to apply or, or whatever nutrient you're trying to apply to the lawn and do some research on what is recommended. Like, so for instance, um, let's give you an example. In the summertime, let's say I'm trying to put out two pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Well, I, I look on the bag of fertilizer and let's say it's a 16.48. Sorry, I guess I'm tired of this yawn. I'm sorry. Um, part of it can't uh, edit that out when it's live. But anyway, it was a 1648. The first number is your nitrogen, 50 pound bag. So you divide that number in half. Okay. And so that means there's eight pounds of nitrogen in your 50 pound bag. Well, if you know that you want to do two pounds of nitrogen per every a uh, thousand square feet, then, then you can do, do the math on how much I need to put out on my lawn. So that's why, I, you know, I'm using a fertilizer that's like a 38% nitrogen. So in that bag, it's got 19 pounds of nitrogen in that 50 pound bag. Um, so, you know, it, you can, again, do the math on how much, if I use that whole bag, there's 19 pounds in the bag. If I use a whole bag on a 10,000 square foot lawn, I'm putting out 1.9 pounds of nitrogen. Say I want to put out a little bit more now. I want to go like two to two point two pounds of nitrogen. Um, so I, I'm putting out a bag for like every eighty five hundred square feet or so, a fifty pound bag. That's with my thirty eight oh six night fertilizer. If you got a sixteen percent nitrogen fertilizer, you're going to have to put out more than double of that to get the same amount of nitrogen. So you need don't worry about the spreader settings. I mean, I'm saying you you can back into the spreader settings. Uh, it's you know. If you understand how big your yard is, it's 5,000 square feet, let's say, and, and I know I want to put this much nitrogen on it, then you, you, it's just calibration, you know, and you kind of, you start off, turn the dial down low and just get started and adjust it until you, you put out the right amount of, of fertilizer. hope that makes sense. I, I'm sorry, but uh, and not everything's going to have a, a setting on the bag. Sometimes you just got to understand what you're trying to accomplish and the amount of nutrients you're trying to put on the lawn and then set your setting to, to accomplish that. 
and that that involves knowing how big your your yard is. Hey Jason, in the last week I've had two different scams try to get me. Could you please tell some of your experience with lawn scams? Well, yeah, I mean the the main thing I get all the time on my phone is these people. I mean it, it's like probably once a week it'll say. Uh, are you available for lawn service? It'll be a text message or maybe an email occasionally. And I know almost immediately it's going to be a scam. It's just, it's something you, you reply to it and it's just, um, and, and else and see, I've done it. I do it just to mess with them. I did it on YouTube one time just to show you what they, what they do. But basically all they, they'll start wanting to know, uh, they like immediately you'll be hired and they, and they end up wanting your email address and all that. And that, so that's the main one I get. Um, I don't, I don't know about other, other scams. I had one guy cheat me out of money years ago, but it turned out he was like a MMA fighter or something. So I, I didn't mess with him, but, uh, I mostly get the text messages on my phone where they won't know if I do lawn service. And it's kind of fun to play with. The last one I did on the YouTube video, he, he, he said that. He's like, can you provide lawn service? And I said, yes, I'd love to, uh, but I'm very expensive or something. They reply back, oh, well, great, we need it done. And I, and I started to tell them, I need the cash under the mat. If, unless you leave the cash under the mat, I'm not coming. And uh, and he's like, well, I can't, you know. And he wanted my driver's license. He wanted me to send him a picture of my driver's license. Like, I'm going to do that to some random person on a text message. I was like, no, I'm, I'm not giving you anything till I just know there's cash under the mat, you know. Uh, anyway, he he finally ignored me. He probably figured I wasn't going to play his game. All right, thank you here. Uh, she laid an iron to kill the moss. I think somebody told us that last time. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, chelated. I think I, I think I, I don't know how you say it. Heavy dose of iron kills moss. Two people have confirmed that. There we go. Thanks for information. Keep up the great job. Heavy dose of iron kills moss three times. We've read it. All right. Um, uh, somebody, yeah, I think I saw that on a YouTube video. The most honeybee friendly lawn, what would you use and what would that look like in the southeast? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I've got... I've got all kind of pollinators on my lawn uh, because I've got, shoot, I've got so many, I've got a lot of plants and stuff in my house and butterfly bushes and I've got Mexican petunia. So I got hummingbirds and bees and butterflies and lantana and all that stuff flying around. So yeah, I mean, we definitely want to be conscious of the pollinators. How do you keep records from each client or customer after service them? What do you use a point of sale system to keep records? What would you suggest the best way to keep records? Um, that's a good point there. Let me see if I can actually uh, get that off here. Yeah, I've got my, uh, wore my yard book shirt today. Um, but yeah, I use yard book. I've been using that for shoot, since 2015, I think. So I've been with yard book quite a while and uh, that's the software I use and, you can uh, check them out. Do you keep records on a computer or a piece of paper? Now, I do, like my chemical records, I do have an actual piece of paper that I can keep track of chemicals in my tribe of code sheet. So when I go spray a lawn, I'm not handwriting out like every uh, product I used on the lawn. I have a code sheet. So I write out the code that represents that chemical at that rate or that combination of chemicals at the combination rate. And uh, that code sheet is available in the i sell a, a long weed control and fertilization documents on my website i think for 47 bucks at lawncarelife.com it is one of the documents included in that and i'm coming out with another one soon it's going to be like a cheat sheet it's going to have the name of all these chemicals what uh, grass types they're laid for the rates per thousand square feet rates per acre the weeds they kill or a bunch of information like that joyce is good app for contractors okay i not heard of that one What's up, y'all? He got in a little early. He usually uh, chimes in about 10 minutes left to go. How do you kill scattered clumps of perennial ryegrass and a Bermuda zoysia line in Texas? Something I can use in November. I used uh, Negate and Certainty last year. Both of those should work. Negate, Certainty, um, Revolver. You can wait. You know, if Bermuda goes dormant, you spray it with Roundup. But uh, Katana, you know, all those are all those will work. Tribute Total. 
Um, but I guess certainly is probably as good as any on, on that. I've uh, been thinking about expanding my lawn care business into spray and what the first steps to take, where to start. Um, you need to contact your state's Department of Agriculture and figure out how you, how you get the license. So like in Alabama, our license that I have is called an OTPS license, Ornamental Turf and Pest Supervisor License. So we call the Department of Agriculture. They send me a study guide. You study, you go take tests. After that, there's continuing education classes we take to earn points to be recertified um, or keep up your license. So, But it, it varies from state to state, so you need to get in touch with your state. The license may be called something different, uh, so you need to figure out what it is in your in your state. And then, then just a second here. Let's turn my Wi-Fi off. Sometimes I've got so many people streaming so many things in my house. Maybe it'll help my signal stay a little stronger. All right, BR350 or BR600. Um, I guess he's asking me which which backpack blower, which steel backpack blower. I it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I used to. I'm kind of personally a Red Max blower guy. Uh, I like the. And I was when I was mowing la lawns, a lot of times I was using kind of the mid size. It was a 51 to 50 is what they called it for Red Max. And but now if you're doing leaf cleanup, then you, you know bigger the better. So I'd go with 600 on that. Um, but you know, but now steel's got 700, 800, so 600 is not even the biggest anymore. But it used to be, and it's got a lot of power. Um, but you know, if you don't, if you don't like carrying that on your back. I think just blowing a few grass clippings off the sidewalk, you, you don't need that. But if you're going to be doing anything bigger than that, bigger definitely can save time or big parking lots. Like if you've got apartment complexes, things like that, I would definitely recommend a bigger blower. How do you get rid of a wasp nest in the lawn? Two cans of black flag didn't work. Anything to prevent those? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if wasp killer has always killed wasp in my experience. Um, but I would almost every year when I was mowing grass, so about every year I'd get hit with wasp or yellow jackets. So I got hit this year at my house. I got yellow jackets. Just I was uh, weed eating down. I've got a creek on my property, and I don't keep it maintained that often, maybe two or three times a year. I was down there just whacking away. And uh, anyway, they come after me and just lit me up two or three times. It was terrible. And um, anyway, but. For wasp, I seemed like a lot of times I would get hit with, they would be in a privacy fence, like a wooden privacy fence. They would be in between the, the boards there where the boards overlap. They would nail me or in the shrubs. And when you go trimming the shrubs, they would come flying out of there and just light you up. And I really do not like being stung. I don't know anybody does. I don't know how you prevent wasp, but I don't, I don't see wasp in the lawn. That's, that's unusual. Like a, if I'm thinking of a wasp, now maybe a yellow jacket in the hole in the ground, but a wasp builds a paper nest usually attached up in the corner of a roof or on a fence or something. Standard still had or speed feed head. I use speed feed heads almost all the time. So when I buy a new trimmer, I like to take the head off and get rid of it or sell it or whatever. And put a speed feed head. I typically use the smaller speed feed head versus the big one. The big one, the advantage it is, holds more line. The disadvantage is it... Sorry. I apologize. I'm just tired today. The big one holds more line. The small one um, does... It, it just spins faster. So I prefer the small one. It fits in tighter spaces. Uh, and it still holds, you know, 12 to 15 feet of line or something like that. And I don't drink coffee, okay? So if I'm tired, I'm just tired. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink Mountain Dews or Cokes or anything. I just, if I'm tired, that just means I need to sleep. And then I wake up and I'll quit yawning. But um, anyway, I'm, try, I'm trying my best here. What's good for spraying stickers in January in South Georgia? You know, I have a customer today. You guys ask questions that seem like it's stuff I deal with. So customer today said that I spray their front yard, okay? And they're, they're happy with it. But she said, hey, what can I do to get rid of the stickers in my backyard? So it's what we have in our area is called lawn burrweed. It looks like little tiny parsley and it'll light you up, but it, it's a cool season weed that's germinating now in the fall. So I told her, I said, Hey, let's do this fall application. That's probably the best one to get rid of. So I've, I'm always spraying her front yard. She said, can you do the fallout on the backyard? How much extra would that cost? 
I gave her a prior. I actually did that today. Hopefully, uh, next spring, she tells me that that really helped with the stickers. Um, but it wouldn't hurt to follow up with the January application. And, um, you know, I, hopefully, like some, I'm using Triplet as my three way product in, in January. So that might finish them off. But I, I'm trying to get it with this fall application where I'm using Spectacle, I'm using 24D, I'm using Metsulfuron, and I've got uh, Simazine in there. All right. Yeah, Jason, getting in early because it's getting dark early. Fall is here for sure. That's right. It's definitely getting dark early. I, somebody was asking me late. Uh, I was trying to figure out when the time changed. I didn't look it up, but it seemed like early November maybe when the time changes. But it, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely getting dark early. And the weather's cool. I said we're going down in the 40s next week in my area. So I'm excited about that. Looking at the high temperatures of like 69, 70 degrees for the highs starting on Saturday here in Alabama. So we're still in the 80s this week. But I'm looking forward to some cooler weather. How would you handle a client that is three months past due on payment? Obviously, have discontinued and he is unreachable. Robert, I hate that, man. I hate that for you. I hate that. Uh, I, I got one that got me this year, too. And um, and honestly, I've been in business for, for a while now, and I'm probably going to go ahead and pull the trigger on something that I should have did years ago. And next year, I'm, I'm planning to go prepay only or credit card on file. So prepay for the year with a 5% discount or credit card on file. Now there might be a few exceptions, old people that's been with me and all that, but like, you know, it, it happened today that two people that I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting ready to spray the yards in a certain neighborhood and, and some of the people haven't paid from the last treatment, which was seven or eight weeks ago. So I got to text them and you know, like you're saying, some of them just don't, I got to text one lady on, on Friday or Saturday. I didn't hear back from her till. Uh, and she says, I'll leave the money under the mat or something. You know, it's like, I, I'm just tired of that. I'm just, I'm so sick of it. So what I would, as far as getting your money, I, I don't know if you can handle, you know, depending on how much money it is, you might can get a collection agency to, not that they're going to necessarily get your money, but just to report them. But I would say change your policies. And, and I think less customers, I, I've been telling customers that I'm going to do that. And most of them understand. I just tell them straight up. I'm like, listen, I'm tired of chasing money. I said, no, it's not you. Uh, most customers are great. And, they, and I had one tell me today, he said, I don't blame you at all. I do the same thing. You know, so people understand it, it gets tired of chasing money. It gets old. Do you think a nice lawn dramatically increases curb appeal for a home? Any other uh, tips? Definitely. Um, absolutely. So some of you follow me on YouTube. My, we brought, we bought, a house built in the 60s. I've been here almost three years. And a little bitty house, the yard was was neglected. It was all overgrown around us. Um, and so it's been a three-year project almost. I'm not still not quite finished, but and then we remodeled the house. But anyway, um, point being, I, I killed my whole yard pretty much and plugged it with Bermuda. Uh, we had a big track hoe in here and cleared off uh, two or three of the acres that we had bought and plugged that with sod. So now what was literally wood so thick you could barely walk through it is now a, um, a pretty much my son's soccer field back there. I've got a little driving range and it, and it just looks super nice. Well, point being, I get so many compliments from on my yard. So there's people, people would notice they're like you the house that's uh, doing all that work on you know, on your yard doing all the work on the house because we we renovated the house and added on and painted it but the yards made a huge difference and uh yeah people notice they they give you a lot of confidence and i think it would absolutely increase the value of our home all right he says the steel 600 is a good all-around blower not too heavy for day-to-day -day use can do pretty good on leaves i have the br 800 keep it for leaves kind of big for a long more yeah, that's kind of my thought you know i, I like I, I don't want the big one on my back all the time but if you go to leaves bigger the better that's why I, like i said with the with the red max i it was the 5150 i'd use a lot of times but that you could get like the 8500 or whatever it is if you wanted the, the big daddy how long does crabgrass seed stay active? Did a total kill and reseed last 
fall been uh, bagging and spraying in hopes it'll eventually go away middle Tennessee. Um, I don't know how long it stays active, but, you know, it, it should die soon. I'm, I'm assuming middle Tennessee, you're going to get a frost soon. If you, it maybe already have, I don't know, but soon you're, you're going to get a frost. It's going to kill the crabgrass, but yeah, those, those seeds are there. Um, and, but, what you need to do is put your pre-emergen out next next year, like January, February time frame before the crabgrass germinates, which is, goes along with the soil temperature. So, yeah, I'd say February of of next year, spray a pre-emergen, and that's going to, I mean, I'm not saying every pit of crabgrass, but, I mean, it gets about 99% of it. Um, and then the next year, you've got way less seeds dropping because you, you didn't have near as much crabgrass in it. So if you got a yard stack totally covered in crabgrass and you spray a pre-emergent, you know, maybe you have a little bit of breakthrough. But then the next year, like I said, there's not near as much putting out seeds. So you got a lot better chance to control it. If you're going to pick up only one, only spring or fall for pre-emergent application, well, Good question. If I was just going to pick one, I'd do spring. And that's that's for our yards, our Bermuda yards, because you're going to get just destroyed with crabgrass. I mean, uh, with our Bermuda. Now, um, you're going to get destroyed with POA and stuff like that if you don't do the fall app. But I can live with that a little bit better than I can the crabgrass. If you if you just get the crabgrass, if you got crabgrass everywhere and you don't do your, your – um, spring pre-emerge i say spring it's like january february really um you know it, the yard's just gonna look terrible all summer uh do you watch or follow other lawn care youtube channels any recommendation including diy homeowner lawn care channels good question jonathan i i don't watch a lot to be honest with you but i i have met uh, quite a few of the guys and um that do i got to go to a toro event about two weeks ago or three weeks ago. That was pretty cool. Um, some of them I already knew and some of them were new ones that I had met. So, uh, so I, I know them more on a personal level than I do on their, do much watching their channel. So I, you know, I know Brian Fullerton, I know, um, let's see, Paul Jameson, I, uh, Sean and Savannah Spencer, they, they, they have like a daily blog style that they do with their mowing business. Uh, Alan Hain is a great guy, and you know he's of course the DIYer. Uh, there's a couple guys that were at the tour of it. They call themselves the Lawn Tools. They're these brothers in Arkansas, and they have literally a golf course in their yard. They they're like real mowers for the DIYers. Um, Pete, what's Pete with GCI Turf? I think I don't really watch Peter. I haven't met Pete, but people talk great about him. Um, Try to think who else. Uh, you know, for entertain, you know, you got, he's not, he doesn't do as much like what we do is a little different, but like Stan, the dirt monkey, he was at uh, the tour of man. He's a great guy and enjoy talking with him. Keith Calpa, some of those guys that I've met. So, you know, Brian and Brittany Allman are, um, they do more hardscaping, things like that. But uh, I can vouch for all of those uh, people as, as people that i enjoy being around i don't as far as their channels like i say i don't watch a lot of the channels but somebody else can comment on here which channel um, they enjoy david says love the channel site thanks for everything you do appreciate that how long should i wait to mow new sod how long should i wait to fertilize it uh what they say on the on the the fertilizing is you don't fertilize or spray until it needs mowed twice and the rule, the the reason for that is you you want it to. It's gonna your sod sort of sitting there and it's growing roots before it starts growing leaves. Um, I understand the leaves are there, but it's it's starting. It's using its energy to grow roots, and then once and then it'll start growing vertically. Um, so you you don't want to spray anything until it needs mowed twice. As far as the mowing goes, you you know to me it's just when it needs mowed. Okay, but I would still just go easy on it i'm not it's like if it grows a little bit i'm not going to just whack it off as low as i can go you know so i'm just going to take a little off the top go gentle with it and uh, once it needs mowed twice then you could um spray but you know we don't, wouldn't want to spray any kind of pre-emerging anything like that until it's, it's stuck to the ground and i would even go 
cautiously on your chemicals because I tell people it's like you, you can live with a little bit of weeds. Let's don't risk your grass getting established. Uh, main thing just needs water. What's the best herbicide to control goose grass and Bermuda grass speed zone? Uh, I, I think some of the quinclorac products, I'm not sure about speed zone. I think some of the quinclorax might, might like, you know, they might solitaire and those kind of products might do fine. And I think I've heard dismiss NXT is a, a good goose grass product. We have a little bit of goose grass. Weird. When they remodel in my house, they dug the gas line or the water line, dug a trench. And it's like when they filled it back in, I mean, it's just like a solid line of just goose grass everywhere. And that's about the, you know, pretty much don't have it much of the other yard, but it's, it's weird. But I, I don't see a lot of goose grass in my area. We do have it, um, but it's not one I spray a lot. But I think, like I said, I think Dismiss NXT is, is a popular one. Hey, Jason, uh, you did a video the other day showing your cherry tree had damage. That looked like a deer rub to me in case you're curious. Maybe so. I, I don't know. It looked like the bark was, was messed up, but we do have some deer uh, in my area. I see their tracks more than I see the deer. I did actually. I was waking up, laying in bed. I used to look at my back window the other day, and a little, I mean, tiny little fawn ran by. Um, I don't see a lot of big deer in my area. Connor says I'm the man. All right, well, that's definitely debatable, but I appreciate that. Alex, looking for advertisement tips. How do I get more lawns in an oversaturated market? Alex from Montgomery County, PA. Alex, I'm a lifelong Phillies fan, okay? I don't know if that's good or bad, uh, but they disappointed me once again this year. Um, I went over to Atlanta to watch them play the Braves. Of course, they got beat. Uh all right, looking for advertising tips. I, to me, I, said, I, I went over this um, other times in other videos, but he, he may not watch those. But you got kind of your, your long-term branding. I, I want to establish a brand in this area. Or you got your short-term conversion. So um, long-term branding, to me, you, you need to be online. You need to establish your a website and a presence there. Um, you need to get your logo and all your, your image needs to be professional looking and i honestly think you know i'm really convinced this more than ever that if you establish yourself to be like premier quality service that that word will get out i've got a friend that started a lot of business this year he'd been working with another big company but he does a, a great job on social media posting before and after pictures of his where he mows grass and then does a lot of landscaping on the side very active on social media, Instagram, Facebook, things like that. And But the quality of his work, I think, speaks for itself. And he does an excellent job. And I think that that actually spreads out. So, I mean, you have just out there like everybody else just mowing grass and doing the same old thing. Uh, it may be a little bit harder. You, you have to compete for like Google space and um, being active on, on social media and things like that. But in a crowded mar market, I would try to position myself to be a, an elite provider. Okay, so whatever that looks like, like we we take care of everything. We're, we're you know, and we do a better better quality work. And I think there's there's room in that part of the market because there's lots of people out there just mowing and blowing and going and all that. But to me, there's not a lot of people that just provide outstanding service and, and you know super quality. Um, and take care of it all. And I think people pay more for that. And you might be able to get a share of the market. Thanks for the great channel. Keep it the good work. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate that. In your area, what's the average price for a thousand square feet of treatment? Uh, it just depends on, you know, like for instance, for me, a little yard, I may be 15 or $16 per thousand um, up to a big yard. I may go down to five or six, you know, if it's really big. Uh, but I don't like the big ones. I'm thinking even as fertilizer prices are going up, chemical prices going up, you know, I, I'm i going to probably price my big ones a little bit high. And if I don't get them, I don't get them. But, I, you know, I, I just don't know how many I'm wanting to do at $6 per thousand. Can you still make money at that? Yeah, you can. But uh, prices are, you know, going up. So, uh, but th that's kind of a, a range there. Minimum charge per application you charge. I mean, it, I don't necessarily have a minimum set in stone, but you know, two thousand square feet or less, it's like, like I said, sixteen dollars per thousand, like thirty-two dollars. But again, 
I'm not driving all the way across town for $32. That's $32 if they're in a set of garden homes where I've already got other yards or it's like real convenient to me, you know? So, um, and that would be a tiny yard. I mean, so, I mean, I've got some in the 35 to 40 range, um, you know, and, and I kind of like that size, to be honest with you, because it's real profitable, like a 3,000 square foot yard for 40 bucks or whatever. I love those. <laughs> All right. Whoops, message could not be loaded. I'm not sure about that. Thanks for answering. Good luck in your years to come. Love the channel. Appreciate that, Alex. On Bermuda Lawn, what would uh, be a good time to do a blanket weed kill application, or would you just buy for spray? Yeah, I mean, we're doing, I'm blank, been blanking in my yards right now, just blanking them with, honestly, I'm using um, Spectacle, Simazine, 24D, Metzofiron. So um, I'm blanking the whole yard. Yeah, on Bermuda, I spot treat mostly in the summertime, but right now I'm blanking. I'm blanking them in January, blanking them in March. I might blanket them again in May. <laughs> so Bermuda gets eat up with weeds if you're not keeping it sprayed. How much uh, soil does tall fescue need in general? Got a lot of large rocks in my yard. Considering covering up the rocks and digging, breaking them up. Uh, I don't. I don't have a good answer for that, honestly. But yeah, I mean, if you got rock, I mean, I would think a few inches anyway. Like, for instance, my yard. I don't have a tall fescue, but we had a did a remodel. Had the septic tank. You could see the lid on the septic tank, and so the guy came out to grade the dirt. And I was like can you put some dirt on top of that? Cause I want to grow grass on top of that. And that, and he got done. I said, did you get some dirt on top? He said, yeah, I put, you know, four or five inches or so. Um, now again, in, if it's 98 degrees in the summer and we, we got the dry spell, I wouldn't be shocked at all if my septic tank is the first place it starts turning brown because the, the roots are going to be a little more shallow than other areas. Uh, but yeah, if you got a rocky yard, I'd definitely bring in some dirt. Um, you know, and I don't know if you're going to oversee or what, but I mean, I would think you need at least a few inches of decent dirt or it's going to be terrible. I mean, my Bermuda, I, I would say this too about my Bermuda is I've tried plugging it and everything. The areas where the soil was, was loose and had better quality soil, it, the grass filled in great. And Bermuda grow on a crack of a sidewalk, so it's not too particular. But I've got some areas where the, the soil is just hard and rocky. And, yes, the Bermuda eventually kind of fills in those areas, but I, I feel like it's taking way longer. So I think even in that situation, if I had put better, put a little soil in there, it would have improved um, what was going on. So, all right, if you want a question, um, bring it in. We've got a few more minutes here. Are you planning to host your event in January? No, I'm not, Matt. And I had, uh, I did one in January 2020. I did three. What he's talking about, if you're not for me, I did. I've done three. What they call we called the Lawn Care Life Conference. Had some great speakers, great sponsors. Uh, the last one I did was January 2020, and it was the best one. I think I did one in November of 2018 and November of 2017. Um, last year, you know, with COVID and things like that, would have been a little bit tricky. And then. Um, I don't know. I, I may do one again. I wouldn't mind doing a smaller one day. Mine's been a two day event. I might wouldn't mind doing something a little smaller that just had uh, maybe maybe a one day weed control event or something like that. But I I'm not doing it this year. Is there a different way to identify different breeds of zoysia? I'm sure there is, Sergio. I, I, for me, I, I kind of break them in a couple of categories, which I know is not all the categories. But in, in our area, we have a lot of like emerald zoysia, which is real fine leaf blade. Like I've got Zorro zoysia, which uh, how you would tell Zorro apart from emerald, I don't have no idea. They look pretty much identical to me. Now, I don't think they are. I mean, I, I believe there's two different varieties, but from looking at them, I don't see how you tell the difference. Uh, so you got like the, the fine leaf blade ones and then you got the wider ones like a Meyer Zorgia or Z52. Other than that, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm not I'm not going to be great on on helping you out um, there. I've got a customer I'm trying to remember the name of the one he's got. It's one that you can real mow at like a half inch, uh, but it has a light. To me, it, it, it doesn't have good color to it. It stays kind of lighter green. He likes it, but um, he brought it in from way away and got his yard sodded. So Virginia buttonweed had good results with Celsius. You found anything else? 
Yeah, I mean, change, I did a video recently with change up and blindside doing side by side. So I sprayed one patch with change up, one with blindside. Those products both work good. I've used Celsius on it, it also works. Um, in the video, the change up actually looked like it outperformed blindside. In my experience, I thought blindside was, you know, any like dismissed product is, is really good for that. But uh, it's tough weed, though. I don't. What I've heard, you spray it around up, it still won't die. It's, it's tough. Um, all right, small business part-time. Is the name John's Lawn Care too generic? I would say so, John. I've always tried to do something a little a little different, I, even though if, even if you're going to work by yourself. And, and, I mean, you know, I'm not saying it can't work. People do that all the time. I just, if you're ever going to sell it one day, I'm, you may not even think about that, but who, they might not want to buy John's Lawn Care. So my business is Alabama Lawn Pros. I mean, it sounds like I'm covering the whole state of Alabama and taking over the taking over the world here. Uh, I'm not, but I want it to sound big and professional just in case maybe one day I will be. I don't know, but um, I would try to go something a little, a little bigger uh, if it was me. What's a good blanket weed killer for St. Augustine? Uh, we use a lot of times in the summer, like I'll use – um, a very low rate of methyl furon and a very low rate of change up. So like eight ounces of change up per acre and a quarter ounce of methyl furon per acre. And that combination can do a, a lot for your warm season grasses. Um, so you, you could just go with the methyl furon. Again, it's going to depend on what kind of weeds you're trying to kill, but you know, that's, a, that's a combination I use sometimes. One day event folks on weed control would be a great idea. Yeah. I mean, it would. And, and Matt, it's like, it's like I could get a place to do it. That, that having a place is not a problem. The the tricky part is is like if if it rains. Let's say we put all this effort in, we're gonna have a one day event and it rains. <laughs> you know, it's like because it needs to be an outdoor event with like perfect weather, and I can see that being great because we want to get out and we want to actually do something, not just sit there and talk about weeds, but get out in the yard, look at weeds, spray water, ride equipment, things like that, and. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't know. I, I think I would like to do it. I think it would, could be great. I can get some good speakers and stuff. Do you kill acorn sprouts in St. Austin? How do you kill them? Um, you know, I, I wonder, I don't, I don't know this, but mezzofion is, you know, not good for oak trees, my understanding. So I wonder if it would actually kill a baby, um, a baby, you know, oak tree sprouting up. But a lot of times when I see those and I, I see them, they come every time of the year. If somebody's got a big oak tree and they're dropping, they're putting all these, like, look at all these weeds. I said, those aren't weeds, that's baby trees. If you just mow the lawn a few times, they'll usually go away. So I would just go with the old lawnmower on that. Uh, Jason, how do you uh, fungicide? Do you uh, do fungicides as part of your season plan? No, I don't. The reason most of my yards don't really have a problem with that other than like dollar spot and stuff like that so but if you have a customer that that regularly gets a fungus um like if they get one you may ask them hey have you seen this before in your yard and if it's a problem because a lot of times the same yard will get it in the same place every year then at that point you can include it in that customer's program i don't have enough percentage of customers that have a problem with it to just include it with everybody um, but if i had one then I would, I would spray something like in the fall, like this time of year before those cool nights come. Because a lot of times that's when the, the fungus will start, but you might not notice it till the next spring. But by then it might be too late. It's already, fungus might not be active then. It just, but now you're just waiting on the grass to recover from the damage. What treatments would you apply to your client's yard at this time and during winter? So right now doing your fall application, just finishing that up actually for my business, um, Pre and post emergent, I'm using Spectacle Flow, Simazine, Metzulfion, 2,4-D, and surfactant spraying that. That's on my Bermuda Zoysias. On the, the Simpine St. Augustine's, I'm using a lower rate of Spectacle Flow and uh, Simazine. No 2,4-D, no Metzulfion. Uh, you can put some other post emergent in there if you want to, like a Trimec or something like that. Um, so uh, in the winter, I'm doing lime. And that's what most people do around here. And when I say winter, I'm talking like November, December, and then January, I'll start spraying pre-emergent again. How can I buy paper sheets for spray treatments from you? And do they contain carbon copies? 
uh no i don't have any kind of product like that um any kind of, i don't i don't know who would uh who would have those where you can get your carbon copy if you're gonna write some kind of note on there i'm sorry i'm not i don't provide those what would you spray what products would you use for fungus um the one well like i've used fame fame g sometimes i have like fungicides are expensive if you're not familiar with them i'm not the great see my heritage is one that was recommended me a lot i'd go with my harold's rep james y'all have seen him on here before he helps me a lot on that so um, but sometimes, you know, the advantage of a granular product is you can keep it on your truck and, and you can just put it out when you need it. Where a liquid product, you know, it's like, shoot, I don't want to mix the whole tank up. with it. I've got something in my tank already and I don't want to wait till I empty my tank just to go put a fungicide in there and just go spray one yard. So sometimes even the granular is more expensive. You can put that fame G out to one, a broad spectrum when they kill a lot of stuff all right we got a few more questions and we're wrapping up here best lawnmower <laughs> i you know there's a lot of good ones i'm not gonna say what's the best lawnmower but i like them um, i've got toro and Ash smart they're both great i've had skag i've had hustler i've had gravely's i've had you know there's a lot of good brands out there there's a few brands i would stay away from but i'm not gonna mention those right now paper records yeah i can buy called um uh I don't, I don't, I don't know as far as buying something that has. I've, I've got this document. In fact, we're talking about on my website. It's, it's weed control and fertilization documents. Packs like forty-seven bucks, but it has all these chemical names. And I'm coming up with this other one that has chemical names and the rates and all that. I'm, I'm hoping to get it for sale in the next week or so. Um, the other thing is, is included in all these documents. It has programs, what to spray, pricing charts, all kind of stuff. And all that stuff's at lawncarelife.com, but it it has like the chemical names, the rates um, of stuff I'm spraying, and the codes. And that's most of that stuff's for warm season grasses because that's what I deal with. Um, but I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. I, but as far as like the carbon copies and all that, I don't know where you would get that stuff. Uh, one other question: Will it be safe to spray around a ripper birch tree for broadleaf weeds in a centipede lawn? Um. Yeah, I think you'd be fine on that. I mean, don't don't quote me. Check out the label. But a centipede lawn, we're, you know, in the summer, I use change up a lot uh, at a low rate, like spot treating um, lespedeza and weeds that are common in centipede lawns. Um, in the January, I'm spraying my pro. I mean, a really low rate, maybe atrazine. But but then when it starts transitioning, I I don't out of dormancy, I don't really spray anything as far as uh, herbicide, but. Yeah, change up's a great product that you could spray. I mean, I wouldn't just go spray the leaves on dousing the the tree if you can help. But um, all right, Bassmaster says pentathlon. I hope I said that right. Good and expensive for a dollar spot. Yeah, the pile of the dollar spot. My understanding is like you put a. I mean, just so many yards get it. Especially this year, we had a real rainy year. But if it um, sometimes the fungicide, it'll give you like a few weeks prevention, you know, but it's like the dollar spot just might carry on for months. You know, it's like how many times you're going to pop. But anyway, that's the recommendation here from Bassmaster 1953. We're going to end it with that. We've an hour and three minutes. It's time to go. Appreciate you guys being on here. And I'm taking next week off. I'll be at the GIE Expo. Coming up next week, like I said, if you hadn't registered for that, you've still got time to register. You use my promo code VIPLCF. It will save you 50%. If you're going to the show, love to see you. I'm going to be on the influencer panel Friday morning. I think it was in your brochure you got about the uh, thing. So maybe I'll get to meet some of you guys in person. I'll be around uh, Thursday and Friday walking around the, the trade show. Um, let's see if I can get one more few more quotes. It'd be neat to see if you did saw different areas of your lawn and watch their progress. Yeah, I've, I've got I pretty much got all the warm seeding grass in my house. I got centipede, St. Augustine, Bermuda, Zoysia. So I, I got kind of everything. Do you ever backpack three, back par three grass ever grow? Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of grass. I have thrown out random grass and it's almost 80% filled in. So um, zero turn, won't mind small yards. I use a zero turn anytime I can, pretty much. I don't want to push. 
Well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And St. Austin, two brown spots in lawns, otherwise healthy problem or checking out. Uh, you might want to look at chinch bugs as a possibility. So you get down and see if you can find any tiny little bit bugs. You can go on my YouTube channel and say well, uh, chinch bugs, lawn care life. And I've got a video. You can actually see what a chinch bug looks like. But they are tiny and maybe hard to find. But that's a possibility. All right, guys. I'm out. Talk to you later. Bye.